Swan outside over two tonight. I must apologize, my broadcast went offline for a little bit and recording it, so you'll be able to see what you missed, but I'll let you know Torres hit a home run to left field and absolutely no doubter as Madden tries to float one in there. The 2-0 pitch just catches the plate, 2-1. No one on, no one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 9-2 to two, Georgetown. The pitch on the ground, off the glove of Mitchell. And reaching is Swan. Harley will step in now. With no one out, had a home run in her last at bat. Pitch misses upstairs. One-zero pitch, fouled back. So Swan at first base, no one out after the Torres home run. Two runs come across have come across this inning. Georgetown scoring in all but one inning so far. As the one misses upstairs, throw down second base will be way over the head of Evans. Trying to make a play over the third base, it'll be offline to Mitchell. As Swan will wind up at third base. So Swan at third now with no one out. For Hartley at the plate. Inside and that hits Hartley, she actually catches it. So runners at the corners, no one out for Prince. A double and a single in this game. She's two for two. As Prince looks at one outside. The 1-0 is foul back. Runners at the corners, no one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Georgetown leading nine to two over Cedar Park. Just misses, two balls, one strike. So Prince at the plate. Hartley at first, Swan at third. The 2-1 pitch misses inside, 3-1 now to Prince. Three one is Fouled at the plate. A full count now to Prince. Miller on deck. Everybody. 
Payoff pitch. Outside, ball four. First walk given up by Singleton. The bases are now loaded for Miller. Miller with a base hit back in the first inning was out at home play. Popped up to Easy Robinson back in the second. So the bases loaded, nobody out for Miller as Cami calls time. As we will be getting a new pitcher in for Cedar Park, it'll be Kea Oberg. Coming in to replace a Madden Singleton. So while she gets warmed up, we'll take a quick break. Bases loaded, nobody out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Listening to Cedar Park softball on the Vite Media Network. And we're back here at Georgetown High School. Miller stepping in. With the bases loaded, nobody out. Swan over at third base, Hartley at second, and Prince over at first. Same Oberg pitch, he came in in relief against Marble Falls. Helping close the door against them. First pitch is slammed to left field, but foul and off the wall. Right now, just looking to get out of the inning with minimal damage. Miller trying to jump all over that first pitch and he got out just a little bit ahead of it. Comes the 0 1 outside for a ball. And here comes the 1 1 in there for a strike. Miller now facing a one, two. Here comes the pitch from Oberg. Swing and a miss. The bad kind of taps Garcia in the back of the mask. That's why she wears one, or at least one of the reasons why. A big first out of the inning. First strikeout for Oberg. And I'll bring up Pinnell. Pinnell with a RBI double. Scored a run and flew out to center field in her last plate appearance. Pitch misses upstairs. As 1-0 pitch misses, they're gonna see if she swung. They're gonna appeal and say she did not swing. 
It's 2 and 0. So Pinnell waiting for a 2-0 pitch from Oberg. Here it comes. Popped up. Should be playable for Evans. Makes the catch for the second out of the inning until fly roll called. I would assume at least. And there's two away now for the pitcher Blinko, who homered back in the first inning and popped out to Robinson. Duo pitch. That one just misses. One zero pitch. Misses just low. Doesn't get a chase. It's 2-0 to Blinko, bases loaded, two away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. That one's popped up, Evans underneath it, makes the catch, and Ober comes in with the bases loaded and nobody out and doesn't allow a single run to come across. Wow. After four complete our score, it's Georgetown 9, Cedar Park 2. You're listening to Cedar Park Softball on the Vibe. The media network, and let you know about our network sponsor, Academy Sports and Outdoors, for all the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. We'll be right back. You're listening to Cedar Park Softball on the Vibe Media Network. It wouldn't take very long. Top of the fifth inning here at Cedar Park High School. Nine, not Cedar Park. I keep saying that. I want to be Cedar Park High School, but sadly it's not. I'm calling for Cedar Park, though. Nine, one, and two do up for the Timberwolves. It'll be Alexander, Molly Mitchell, and Evan Garcia. Cedar Park trailing by seven. They'll have nine outs to work with at the very least to try and scratch and claw the way back into this one. Up to bat for Cedar Park, number 11, Taylor Alexander. Alexander hit by a pitch act in the second inning. As she fouls one away. Is the old one as she swings and misses. Quickly behind 0 and 2. As swings and misses through that one. Fifth strikeout for Blinko. First out of the inning. Back to the top of the order. It's Molly Mitchell. She's over two tonight with a strikeout and a flyout. Pitch is up the middle and diving catch made by Pinnell. 
as Mitchell hit it hard just to the wrong spot. Evan Garcia will step in. She's flown out to center field twice tonight, 0 for 2. I need to make her shoe. I should have seen that. It's all number five. It is Annika Oberg. She'll step in and swing and miss to the first pitch. That one's in there for a strike. The 0-2, right this is low and outside, one and two. It's the one, two, foul back over the screen. Oberk stays alive. One two to Oberg. Misses low. Good take there by Oberg. Avery Evans on deck. As someone threw it in. Hits off the top of the the dugout, the Georgetown dugout. The two two on the ground and threw for a base hit. Oberg able to keep fouling one off. He found off pitches and is able to find the hole through the left side of the infield. Lubbing up Avery Evans, he has struck out twice tonight. As Evans swaying out of her shoes on that one. I like the idea. Trying to jump on that first pitch. Oberg at first base. Evans at the plate as Evans looks at one low. Throwback over to first base. It's going to get away going to right field, but Oberg diving back to the plate. Maybe Annika was just off the bag a little bit. As one one pitch is swung through. And the one, two, swung on and missed, strike three, six strikeout for Blinko. It's the final out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Our score, Cedar Park two, Georgetown nine. You're listening to Cedar Park softball on the Vibe Media Network.
bottom of the fourth inning here, fifth inning, correction, at Sear Park. I'm going to get it right when this night is over. I promise you that. Georgetown High School. See, look, I got it right. Leighton Landreth will step in as more defensive changes for the Timberwolves as Oberg is in a catch. I'm not sure when she did come in. Alexander back over at first base. As Hernandez is now playing second. Outfield looks very similar. Pitch is swung on and missed. Comes the 0-1, in there for a strike. <laughs> Oberg ready for an 0-2, here it comes, as she swings and misses through that one. Oberg will apply the tag. Second strikeout for Kea Oberg. First out inning, they'll bring up Harris, who had a base hit back in the fourth inning and came around to score on the Torres home run. As a team, Georgetown is just missing the single, sorry, not the single, the triple for the cycle. In there for a strike to Harris. Oh one. In the air to right field, that's gonna get down for base. They go all the way to the wall. Make us up with it, make that Bosha up with it, throws it in over the head of Hernandez, but Evans able to cut it off. One out double for Harris. That'll bring up Torres, who has been a menace. Two base hits, sorry, three hits, including two singles and a homer and has scored three runs as Oberg's gonna go touch, talk to Oberg. What's interesting is this is Kay Oberg pitching to her twin sister. So Torres steps in, looks at one low, gets away from Oberg, going over the third base is Harris. One-0 pitch, misses low, gets right back to Oberg, flip over to home plate, and she's out at home! Way to stay in as Oberg flips it, flips it back over to Oberg to get that out at home plate. Back-to-back -back balls, miss. Annika Oberg, that one able to get a good hop off the wall and Kea comes in to get the out as 2-1 pitch, 2-0 pitch is on the ground to second. Hernandez slips over to first in time for the final out of the inning. Well, not conventional, but it's a 1-2-3 inning. After five complete, our score, Georgetown nine, Cedar Park two. Listening to Cedar Park Sampa on the Vibe Media Network.
Top of the sixth inning here at Georgetown High School. I told you I would get it right. It'll be a Kea Oberg, Addison Parton, and Izzy Robinson. Actually, that might be Hernandez, but we'll see when she comes up. Oberg swings and misses or fouls it back. Oberg waiting for an 0 1 pitch. Uh, looks at one upstairs, but they're going to call that one in the zone, maybe at the number. Owen two. Oh two pitch to Oberg. Swing and a miss. Strike three. That's the sixth strikeout for Blinko. And now bring up Addison Parton, who walked back in the second inning, came around to score, and then grounded out on the fielder's choice. Swings and fouls the first pitch back. As it will be Hernandez in place of Robinson. Comes the 0-1. That one just catches a part of the play. It's 0-2. Oh the 0-2 on the ground and through for a base hit. Long throw back over to first base. Almost hits Addison in the head. Interesting play there is Coons out in left field. There's a correction actually, and it's not who I think it is. There's actually Landreth out in left field. And now in the game for Cedar Park, number four, Richley Hernandez. Thinking a long throw back over to first base, probably trying to catch Parson Parton napping, but nearly hit her in the head. So Hernandez getting her first at bat tonight. Swings and fouls the first pitch back. Comes the 0-1, is swung on and missed. Comes the 0-2, swung on a miss. It gets off the glove of the catcher, but that still counts. Actually, no, dropped to strike three. So Hernandez stays alive. In here to right center field, coming in the center fielder, dives, makes the catch, throws behind the runner, and not able to double up Parton, but Hernandez was robbed out in center field by Swan. Well, Acosta will step in. 
Round out and a base hit, an RBI base hit back in the second inning. First pitch is fouled up behind the screen. Comes the 0-1, low. Costa waiting for a 1-1 pitch. Parton over at first base, two away, and that one catches the zone. It's one and two. Comes the one-two pitch. Popped up in the air to left field, coming on, and that one's gonna fall in for a base hit. Parton moves on over to second base. Acosta, second hit in the night. That will bring up Sole Bosha. So two on, two out in the top of the sixth inning. Bosha is fouled back. They swung at the first pitch every single time. And they get just underneath it. Like the play, though, trying to jump on her. As 0 1 pitch just catches the play, it's 0 and 2. Comes the 0-2, line drive, and through for a base hit. They're going to hold Parton over at third base as the throw will come into home plate, and the bases are loaded now for Taylor Alexander. Alexander is hit by a pitch, and she struck out tonight. If it wasn't for Hernandez being robbed out in center field, could be nine to three right now. Alexander trying to eat into this lean, just swings to the first pitch. That one comes in and hits her, and a run scores. Many ways to pick up an RBI, many ways to score a run. As Addison Parton comes in to score, it's now 9-3. to three. Back to the top of the order. Now bring up Molly Mitchell, who is... 0 for 3 tonight with a strikeout and a flyout and a lineout. And that liner back in the fifth inning, she hit it hard. Diving play. So base is still loaded. As pitch misses upstairs. So Acosta at third, Bosha at second, Alexander at first. The 1-1, one, one. misses low, two balls, one strike to Molly Mitchell. Here comes the 2-1 pitch, low, throwback go to third base, 
as Acosta's back safely. So three and one now to Molly Mitchell. That one's in there for a strike. It's now a full count to Molly Mitchell. Acosta at third, Boche at second, Alexander at first. Nine to three, Georgetown here in the top of the sixth inning. Payoff pitch. Comes in, that hits her. <laughs> Second straight hit by pitch. Another run comes home. This time Acosta. Bosha move over to third base. Soleil will move over to, oh, sorry, Alexander will move over to second. Two runs have come across. It's nine to four, and that'll bring up Annika Oberg. Had a base hit back in the fifth inning. And just a little behind the scenes fact here. When I started the inning off with the K.O. Oberg strikeout accidentally wrote it in Annika's spot, and I thought, eh, there's no way we're going to get, you know, may, may, hope, hope, we might not get back to that spot. Well, sure enough, we do. So, good for Cedar Park. Bit of an oof moment for me. But bases now loaded, sorry, still loaded. For Cedar Park, Bosha at third base, Alexander at second, Mitchell at first. Roberg, first pitch is low. Oberg holds off. Oberg able to pull one through the left side for a base hit. One zero pitch. That one misses and is dropped by the catcher Miller. And it's two and zero. Cedar Park pulling, trying to have some late game heroics. We've seen it against Leander. He may be down, but they are never out. The 2-0 pitch is on the ground, right to the shortstop. Throw over to first base will be in time for the final out of the inning. However, Cedar Park scores two, makes it a five-run game. We head to the bottom half of the sixth inning, our score. Georgetown 9, Cedar Park 4, listening to Cedar Park Softball on the Vibe Media Network. Bottom of the sixth inning here at Georgetown High School. Eight, one, and two. Make that two, three, and four. Looking in the wrong spot. Due up for the Eagles. Cedar Park has cut into this lead. Made in the five-run game once again. We Swan, Hartley, and Prince. Swan reaching back in the fourth inning. I'm not sure how to roll that one. This was off the glove of Molly Mitchell. Throw that one a base hit. So Swan is one for three tonight. Cedar Park just trying to keep in a five run game, give them a chance in the top of the seventh.
Oberg's pitch to Swan. This is upstairs off the glove of her sister. One ball, no strikes. The one pitch is lined down the left field line, and that's going to be a fair ball. Hernandez up with it. As Swan in for a double. As more changes have been made to the defense. As Hernandez is in left field, Pardon's at third base. As Hartley steps in, she has reached all three times tonight, a homer and a single and a hit by pitch. As the first pitch misses low. Pitch rolls in there. As into third base goes Swan. And Mitchell comes in to play second, the third person to play second base tonight. All Easy Robinson, Hernandez, and now Mitchell. That one's on the ground at the third baseline, but foul. It's two and one. Two one pitch, just misses. It's three and one to Hartley. In the air to center field, it backs up Bosha. That one's gone. <laughs> Second home run tonight by Hartley. And for the second time tonight, after Cedar Park makes it a five run game, a two run home run makes it a seven run game. Prince will stand in now. Single, double, and a walk. Pitch to Prince is in there for a strike. Low. And to Prince, it's one and one. One one pitch to Prince with no one out. And that one's lined to the left field. That's going to get down for a base hit and knock off the wall. Prince, big turn at first base. The throw into second base. That one's going to have a chance. And unable to in time to make the tag is Mitchell. That was a lot much closer play, though, than I think Prince was expecting. Now I'll bring up Miller. Miller with the base hit back in the first inning was out at home. Pop up in a strikeout. She's one for three. So we will get a courtesy runner in for the Prince. 
Make that just a pinch runner, Marissa Martinez. As Oberg floats a change up in there to Miller. It's 0-1. Tries to float another one in there. Misses outside. It's one and one. On one pitch, hit in the air to right field. It backs up Mikas up against the wall. She makes the catch. The throwback into second base is right behind, and she's out. It's your average everyday nine four six double play. <laughs> As pinch runner had taken off running, thinking that one was out of the park, and Mika stayed on it and caught it up against the wall and able to cut down the runner at second base. So Pinnell will step in now. She scored back in the first inning and swings of the first pitch right to Evans that short. Throws it over to first base in time for the final out of the inning. Cedar Park will have one last chance. They're trailing by seven. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Our score, Georgetown 11, Cedar Park 4. You're listening to Cedar Park Softball on the Vite Media Network. Top of the seventh inning here at Georgetown High School. Cedar Park, one last chance to get back into this one. Trailing by seven once again. They started off the game trailing five to nothing, made it a three-run game, and then Georgetown extended their lead to five again on a homer in the second inning. Extended it to seven on a homer in the fourth inning. Cedar Park cuts into it, makes a five-run game again, and then once again, George Tonics makes it a seven run game with a home run. Avery Evans will step in. She's 0 for 3 tonight. As Evans swings at the first pitch, hits it in left, left center field. Coming in is the center fielder, makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Evans just kind of scooped it into the air. One away for uh, Kaya Oberg. Oberg struck out to begin in the sixth inning. This pitch to Oberg misses inside. Top of the seventh inning, no one on. One out. Eagles leading the Timberwolves 11 to four. As Oberg fouls one back, it's one and one.
Comes a 1-1 as swings and misses. It's 1-2. One two pitch just stays alive at a pitch low. One two once again. Just stays alive. One, two, once again. Upstairs, good take by Oberg. The 2-2, two, two. scooped it in the air. Swan racing in, makes the catch. Last chance now for the Timberwolves. Will be Addison Pardon reached twice tonight, has scored twice tonight. Reaching on a walk and a single. As Parton fouls one away. The 0 1. Line drive caught by the shortstop. And that will do it. Georgetown gets a bit of measure of revenge against Cedar Park as last time they were here, they were the first team to beat them in this stadium. And that will end the season for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. They end fifth in the division on the outside looking in of a playoff spot. But they fought all the way through and they fought the entire season. There was never an ounce of give up in this Cedar Park Timberwolves team as they played hard throughout the entire season and there's a lot of a lot of good to look forward to in the coming years. And I'll do it from us here at Georgetown High School and I'll do it from us here on the season. Our final on this one, Georgetown 11, Cedar Park four. I'd like to thank my QA, Rosie Bega, for making sure everything was sounding good out there and what we like to call Vipe land. As well as for Cedar Park High School. Four years now I've been calling Cedar Park softball games and I love doing it every single time. So I hope I get to come back next year. Because I absolutely love doing it. And I'll do it from us here this Cedar Park season, our final Georgetown 11 Cedar Park Forum. My name is Brian, reminding you to please wash your hands, please wear a mask, please stay safe. I'll see you next time. Thank you.